Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2019 Battle Series. We're here, it is Monday, we're kicking off again for another week with this Dialga Kyoga team. So, had a lot of fun last week, it was very good. If you missed any of those episodes, make sure to go over here, check all of the episodes out last week to see how we ended up getting to this point with the team so far, and we're going to continue on with it this week. We had a bit of a hiccup on Friday, where we had maybe one of our first matches this in last week where we had a loss um, and then we bumped into Sheninja as well on Friday which was uh, a very interesting team composition but it didn't go as well as we wanted it to but as it's Monday we'll do a quick recap before we get into the episode as always the team is in the description below as well as Apocalypse for you guys to try and I will do a QR code team on Friday as soon as we finished up with this team for you guys to try out for yourselves if you haven't already so we've got the Dialga there it is going to be our trick room setter we've got Thunder Earth Power on it for coverage. It's going to be our best answer to something like Kyogre, and it's done really well so far in this week, especially those Scarf Kyogres that we've seen so predominant and overpowering in this format so far this season. Got our own Kyogre. It is going to be a Trick Room based Kyogre, very bulky, and um, has got the Votarium Z to take advantage of that Trick Room and just cut through teams as soon as we can get it into position. We got Incineroar for good reason. We need it because otherwise we struggle a little bit against opposing ghost types mainly Lunala gives us nice support with that fake out as well and intimidate support and then our odd pick on this team is going to be the Zerkatry I feel like it's a nice Pokemon a little bit forgotten about in this format but still able to do some work we had a really nice episode last week where it just destroyed our opponent's side of the field with those tail glow and beast boosts and a trick room so and then we got our second trick room user Bronzong is going to be there with the skill swap to help us support our rain and weather control and matches um, um, and also Jarable, it's a good check to Xerneas as well as that Amoongus who's going to be the final sixth member of the team that provides a little bit of support with its Rage Powder, Spore Control and all those other things to help us shut down opponent's options. So without further ado guys, let's get into it. Looking forward to it. As always, if you enjoy this sort of content, make sure to drop a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss these daily episodes as well as our guide series, Flinch Squad Circuit, stream uploads and everything else that we have on the channel at the moment. But very exciting. Let's choose some music before our first opponent pops up like magic. So let's go with Necrozma version 2 if we can find it in time. Or should we go Necrozma version 1 for our first game and then Necrozma version 2 for our second game? That sounds like a plan, doesn't it? Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. If it does, as always, I will cut this out and we'll come straight back to it once someone pops up on the ladder. But normally that's kind of the cue for someone to pop up, but they're not. Okay, we found a first opponent, like magic. So, I wasn't even, I was too distracted, but there we go. Here we go. Into team preview, and we are playing against Cure and Black, Tapu Koko, Kyoga, and um, is that um, superior? Superior? Superior. It is superior, isn't it? Incineroar and Bronzong. So it's going to be a little bit of a trick room combination here and a, a bit of a fast mode as well because you've got the Bronzong on the opposing side of the field that's going to be there to help support that Curan Black against primarily things like Xerneas that it would otherwise struggle with. I do feel like uh, Dialga has a really good time here. Um, I think Dialga and Amoongus isn't too bad either. To lead us off, I do probably want to bring in Cinero for the fake out support and things like that. And do I want to bring Zerkatry as our last Pokemon and just leave Kyogre at home? This one, um, hmm. I don't know. Kyogre of our own can be really nice, but then the Zerkatry just is so appealing in this match. Although, because I feel like the Tapu Koko definitely makes an appearance, um, I think I'm gonna go with Zerkatry and lock it. So let's kick off on this happy Monday, happy people, and um, yeah, let's see how we can deal with this Curran Black today. It makes it a bit more difficult not having uh, Xerneas in our team. It does do pretty badly against Xerneas, as you saw, as we played Curran Black last week on the on this one of our streams. Right, there we go. Dial Garamungus for ourselves, and we're going to see Curran and Tapu Koko. Hmm. This isn't bad at all. We have to watch out for the the Icinium on the uh, the Curran Black, of course. Going into the Amoongus could get rid of that pretty quickly. Um, Curran Black's not generally known to carry 
um, any sort of dragon type attack so we don't need to worry about that too much for Dialga. Um, I'm just going to trick room and I think what we'll do is switch into Incineroar straight away, get an Intimidate onto this shiny Kuren Black. Kind of looks cool, shiny. There's a part of me that's like, I, I do like the green. It's a nice green. It's not like that that snot green that you normally see um, on Scissor and Groudon and things. So it's it's kind of cool. And that pink bit that it's got going across its head looks looks all right. Looks all right. There's a light screen coming out from the top of Coco. Um, bit of protection for the whole team. At least it's not a taunt. And here is the Z move. It is going to be that Icinium Z. It's going to be into our Incineroar, I'd imagine. And trying to take down our Amoongus before it can do anything to support. But, unfortunately, Incineroar is going to be the one Pokemon that's able to take it, especially after an Intimidate. Oh, it's into Dialga. Ha ha. Okay. It's neutral. Uh, and I mean, we take it pretty comfortably there and get our Trick Room up, which is very nice. I'm going to be able to do some good damage to the the uh, the Coco this next turn um, with our Earth Power, even though the Light Screen is still up. And um, I think what we'll do is... Hmm, I want to switch into Zerkatry as soon as I can to get the... Uh, although, do I? Do I want to do that? Um, could just Flare Blitz the Curum. I want a U-turn though, that's the thing. I want a U-turn out. Uh, Coco will probably protect out of everything, I think. I'm going to U-turn out on the Curum. Yeah, Curum switching out. Okay, so we can get... Okay, Incineroar coming in. That's fine. Hopefully the Coco attacks the Dialga, because we could do with our Berry being procced here. It did cross my mind to whether or not we U-turn out with our... on our own Dialga, in case of a double protect coming out from my opponent. Um, but it's fine. Um, what we'll do, we'll get Zerkatry onto the field now. And there's the Earth Power into the Coco. But obviously there is the light screen up, so we need to worry about that a little bit. Um, I'm going to bring in Incineroar, and I'm just going to protect Zerkatry here. Uh, because it's likely my opponent fakes out that slot. Um, and as long as we can get uh, Incineroar next to it the next turn, we can Tail Glow, and then the following turn should be able to start doing some damage. Kurum's still going to be a bit difficult to deal with, um, because obviously it's part Dragon typing, but... Plus three with an electric train up, and um, we still should be doing some good damage to it. And it might even be worth if we get Incineroar in this next turn. Even though we've got the fake out support, uh, we could get the tail, tail glow up. It might be worth actually just um, U turning out on the opposing Incineroar once again, so we've got the Intimidate to bring in later to further support the um, the Zerka tree. So there's a Snarl coming out from the opposing Incineroar. Now that changes things, I think, a little bit here because uh, the Coco probably Volt switches out. Yeah. Oh, onto the Zerka tree. Okay. Now how many turns of Trick Room we got left? Two. So we've got a little bit of time. Let's fake out the Incineroar and go for that Tail Glow while we've got the opportunity to. Then the next turn we can protect, get Incineroar out, maybe get a Moongus next to it. And then we can start really chucking, chucking around a lot of damage. And the Coco going out's not bad because once we force the Coco back in later, we'll get that electric terrain up, which is gonna run out pretty shortly with the light screen and the trick room. So where's my opponent gonna do? There's no switch outs, so I'm gonna get that fake out into the Incineroar. It does flinch there and indicates that it is slower than our tree as well so minimum speed and a volt switch coming out from the top of Coco into Zerkatry. Um does decent damage like but I mean it's not too bad as well at the same time okay so Kyogre going to come out onto the field alright hmm. now the thing is here we definitely under speed Kyogre a hundred percent. 
so I'm going to bring in Amoongus. I don't bring in Dialga here. Dialga's not a bad pick here. I'm going to bring in Dialga. Hope our berry gets procced. And I'm going to Thunderbolt the Kyogre. Hmm. Yeah. Kyogre probably protects though. Unless it thinks it's slower than Zergatry. Oh, it's. Oh no! <laughs> it's Iron Ball. Getting caught out with the Iron Ball. And that's it. That's that's game for us, I think, now. That is completely game. Unless we see the Tabakok come back in here, which would be a mistake for my opponent because it gives us the opportunity to get Amoongus onto the field and the Electric Train will end this turn with um, the Light Screen and the Trick Room. Secure him, though. That makes a lot more sense for my opponent. Oh, my. That is that is not great for us. Did not see that coming. I really didn't. Um, let's get Amoongus out. I think by getting Amoongus out into the field, we kind of almost forced Tapu Koko to come out onto the field. Um, at least we know now not to set up the uh, the trick room again that Kyogre um, and yeah let's switch out Amoongus into Incineroar the game's not completely gone for us it's just a bit frustrating that we spend so much time getting our uh, um, circuitry set up just to lose it so freely like that um, hmm. Iron Ball Kyogre We should have earth powered here. We should have earth powered. Like we know that like the Coco comes in for the Kyogre. A hundred percent. There's an ice beam. Gonna be into yeah, Incineroar. The Thunder will still do decent damage to the Coco. Yeah, I mean probably put it in range for an earth power even behind the light screen this next turn. Which is probably likely to go for, um, as we can just, um, yeah, we'll fake out the cure. It's minus one, so not too worried about it. Looks so mean, doesn't it? Looks so mean. Coco just protecting this turn. Can cure him protect? Yeah. Yep. And then we'll go for that Earth Power once again, and we'll go for a U-turn out onto the Curum. I don't think we're going to be able to do this though, with what my opponent's got left. Thunderbolt. Okay, into Incineroar. Oof, does so much damage. Fusion Bolt. It's got to be into Incineroar. Do the double up. Oh wow, we actually survive it. That's amazing. Good job, Incy. I'll be able to get rid of the call call. This might be enough to get us like allow us a little bit of room back into this game. Yeah. That's not bad damage either. Okay. So, all not over just yet. Just yet. As soon as that Kyogre comes in, we'll be able to absolutely nuke it with a, a Thunder, though. Uh, the rain does stop. Incineroar definitely comes in now, though. Yeah. So let's just protect Dialga. We don't need to take any like big risks, I don't think, right now. And bring in Incineroar. Get another Intimidate onto the opposing Curum. 
Because if we can get an end game with potentially like Amoongus and. Um, Incineroar Dialga. Like, what do we need to get rid of? Like, it, the Kyogre is a bit of a pain, but if it's Amoongus versus Kyogre, we definitely win. Um, Dialga has an alright time against it. What are we going to see that here? What's the Incineroar going to do? Hopefully it fakes out and not U-turns. That would be a good play for my opponent. U-turn, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really nice play. Getting the Kieran back in. Unintimidated as well. Gonna just thunder this Kyogre. Um, I'm gonna just switch straight back out into Amoongus. I feel like the Curum probably stays in, attacks, or protects. Uh, the Kyogre probably switches out for Incineroar. My opponent probably trying to buy their time for this electric terrain to disappear, but at the same time. As soon as it does, Amoongus has the ability to put things asleep, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword for my opponent. He could make this the predict here, though. It would make a lot of sense, ice beaming into the Incineroar. We've done it so many times. No, I've actually gone into Dialga this time. Okay. I'll get the Thunder in this electric terrain. It's not quite enough to get the Kyogre, but doing enough. Uh, Dialga avoiding that, so that's really good for us. Hmm. Now, can we win with Dialga and Incineroar versus... Hmm. Because we could get rid of the Kyogre now and just go Rage Powder. But we'd probably lose Amoongus. But I don't think you can take Dialga down, so I think it, I actually preserve Amoongus and go for the switch in. I don't think you take Dialga down with an Ice Beam from this range. I think we're only on about 100 HP. So you either protect Kyogre or switch in Incineroar and take a Thunder anyway. Yeah, it's just going to go for the Ice Beam. It's into the Amoongus slot, so that's fine. Uh, we'll get the Kyogre now. And we probably aren't in too bad a position to actually close this one out going into these next few turns. Hmm. It's not going to be massively straightforward, but it's not at the realms of possibility. Like everything that we've got's really low health. My opponent's still got pretty healthy Pokemon on their side of the field. Which is gonna be how we kind of manage things from here. I'm gonna just protect like the Trick Room now wouldn't be too bad, but we've got a full health Amoongus, which does help us out quite a lot. Doesn't help us against the ice beams, which is the big problem I think. Fake out and free shock. Oh, where's this going? It's a two turn charge move. Wonder where it goes into. Hmm. It's gone into Dialga, 100% into Dialga. Uh, I'm going to switch in Incineroar and I'm going to put. I'm going to put the Incineroar to sleep. And then hopefully our Incineroar... Like, this is the target that I think the Curum is going into. So hopefully it is. It probably takes out Incineroar. Maybe, maybe not, though. Free Shock. Here we go. Such a cool animation. Yeah. 
Yeah, Incineroar actually takes it, so that's really good for us. Paralysis, which is not so hot though, and the Flare Blitz into Moongus, I would imagine. Yeah. And we can put that thing to sleep. And the rain stops, okay. Um, now I'm going to fake out the opposing curum and bring in Dalga. Oh, this is just, uh, yeah, we're continually just going round and round here, aren't we? I'd imagine the curum probably protects. This is such a long game as well. <laughs> It's wearing these two down, making use of what we've got. Can't believe the Iron Ball Kyogre, though. That is the big thing that threw us off there. Yeah, we could have U-turned. Could have U-turned. Now it's probably worth trying to set the Trick Room up, though, if we can. Because I'm going to bring in a Moongus and just protect. I am going to trick room. I am going to trick room now. I feel like this is a good time to trick room. If there's ever a good time, we can do it now. Wish Dialga just had a little more health. You just got to hope the Incineroar stays asleep long enough as well. That's the big thing. There's Ice Beam. Is it into Dialga? No, it's into Amoongus this time. Okay. Leaves Dialga open. Sinor stays asleep. Whew, okay. This could be enough for us to um, get somewhere here. Um, I'm going to just. Uh, Amoongus is so important for us in this match. Um, I'm going to. I expect the Curum to protect here. So I'm going to throw out a Earth Power into that Incineroar slot. Switch into Incineroar. Yeah. I think the Curum's so threatened from a spore right now that it protects. It's been pretty protect heavy as we've been playing through these matches, so it would make sense that it does right now. Yeah. Cinemore wakes up, Flare Blitz. It shouldn't take us out, even if it's into Dialga, but it's into Incineroar, which does take us out, which is fine. Depends how much this Earth Power does. If this Earth Power puts it, doesn't proc its berry. Wow. Okay. Critical hit. Ah. Okay. But we're gonna move this back in now. We can put the Curum to sleep. It's next turn. Earth Power. Earth Power. Mm, yep, yeah. we put the Curum to sleep. Earth Power, the Incineroar. Like a Flare Blitz from the Incineroar doesn't take Dialga down. Doesn't take Amoongus down. So we spore this this turn, spore the Incineroar next turn. We'll be able to get rid of that. It's just getting rid of the Curum, which is going to be a bit tricky as a Snarl as well. Uh, we do have Clear Smog, but we can't Clear Smog ourselves, unfortunately, because we're a Steel type. Which doesn't really help us too much. Still gonna be hard for us to close this one down, I think. Like we get the Incineroar this next turn for sure, but we then need to. <sighs> so difficult. Why didn't we spore the? Ah, oh, did we misclick and we spore into the Incineroar slot? Ah, uh, okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, one thing we could do is potentially start chipping away at the Curum with Earth Powers while we've got the chance to. Um. Or we could get rid of the Incineroar. Um, I think we get rid of the Incineroar. And spore it. Because otherwise... Yeah, we can try and get it next turn, but... As long as Curum stays asleep, that's the main thing. It's still going to take a lot to get rid of it on minus one special attack, I think. Stays asleep. Okay, that's good. 
how many turns of trick room we've got left. The grass knot's not going to do very much to it. And we definitely uh, one turn. So if it says asleep once more, that's kind of nice for us, I guess. Um, yeah, we don't want to clear smog it. But if we can get another set of trick rooms up, that would be incredible. Although I think Dalga goes down to a, a, a nice beam now. Okay, that does nothing. What's Earth Power doing? Again, doing not very much. It stays asleep though. Trick room does end. I guess we rage powder on trick room. Oh, it's just an ice beam coming out here. Can can Amoongus take? Amoongus takes an ice beam. Then I think we've got a chance to uh, to do this because we can then put it to sleep again. We've got plenty of time to do this because it definitely wakes up here. We definitely get the trick room up. Ice beam. Do we take it? Come on, Amoongus. Oh, we definitely take it. And proc the berry. Okay, so we actually probably are able to do this now. Damn. This is a crazy game. We're probably only going to have one game today, but I mean, this is so worth it. This has been a great game. Like coming back from the brink after getting caught out so hard by that um, Iron Ball Kyogre um, and just this slog of a game. So, Kieran, go and protect now. Um, but I think I think we're going to be able to do it. I think we should be able to do it. Um, I was expecting the Ice Beam to do a lot more, but it's kind of nice that it doesn't. So, we'll just spore again. Uh, Earth power once again. <sighs> Maneuvering these Pokemon round and just getting it right as well. It could have went so wrong at so many points. So um, we've just been fortunate along the way. But I mean, just eking out a win like this is like it's so nice to be able to do with this sort of team. Right there we go. It's asleep. So hopefully it stays asleep for a long time because um, we'll grass knot once again. I mean, we could just Rage Powder. It's probably a better idea, just in case it wakes up. Because protecting Dialga, who's doing more damage at the minute, is way more important to us. And knowing that we can take at least an Ice Beam if it's fired out at us. Because I would chase down the Dialga. It's the one thing that's setting up the speed control that's kind of disrupting my ability to win this game. One more Earth Power should get it. Yeah, there's the Ice Beam. Mm -hmm. And now a Grass Knot. As long as we've got two turns of trick room left, we should be fine. Oh, we've got one more turn. One more turn. I mean, we should still be alright to do it. Because I think, yeah, we just grass knot, earth power, they protect. We rage powder. And, earth, oh, trick room, and yeah. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense to do that. It's just whether the earth power has a low roll or not. <laughs> It shouldn't be. We should. I think from like past turns, we should be able to get it. So we just, um, yeah, rage powder, trick room, and then earth power. I'm hoping. Yeah, it should be enough. It should be enough to get it. And there's the ice beam. This will take down Amoongus. But Amoongus done so well here. So well for us. Good old little mushroom. You can come back for a nice little rest, my friend. There's a trick room. Can Dialga claim the crown for strongest dragon in this format? Right, Earth Power, here we go. It's going to protect. But we can't risk not doing it in case it doesn't protect. There we go, yeah. So pleased it hasn't got pressure, but we do have pressure, so it's going to run out of moves sooner or later as well. Um, and that's this is a moment of truth. Moment of truth. Here we go. We need the Earth Power to take it down. Come on, come on, Dialga, with all your might and all your power, do this one thing for us. Take this Curum down. Boosh! Good job. <laughs> And congratulations, great game to my opponent. What an absolutely crazy match. 
like I say guys that's taken us to 30 minute mark so we're just gonna get one in today but that's well worth it that was a crazy game coming back from all those things in that match and being able to kind of get to the point where we're actually kind of yeah actually getting the win after I thought was completely gone is just incredible so um, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode leave your comments make sure you leave your comments in the comment section below and uh, I look forward to reading through them but go away have fun have a great rest of your day and I will speak to you all again on tomorrow's episode so until then guys take care of yourselves and bye bye